Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to live prayer today. I'm Becky Brown, associate pastor here at First United Methodist Church in Waynesville. I'm really glad that you have joined me for a prayer time today. Um, we do this every Wednesday at noon, um, and I have an exciting development for you. Um, we have been talking as a staff um, about ways that we can make the sanctuary space available for small groups of people to gather safely um, for prayer and reflection. And so we have decided that beginning next week, we would like to host a sign up. Now the numbers are limited, of course, because we wanna make sure we're spaced six feet apart and um, have our masks on and I will wear a mask next week um, in addition to um, other safety precautions. So if you would like to come to live prayer next week, um, then you can come to the office and check in um, around 1145 or a little before that and um, have your temperature checked and grab a mask if you need one and come on up to the sanctuary and join me live. So we'll still be doing the Facebook Live, um, but there are 25 spaces available for people who would like to come and sit in person and join me. Um, so we hope that you will be able to do that um, if you are interested spread the word. Um, and also the sanctuary will be open um, for a few minutes after that um, for you to come and kneel at the altar to um, pray in your, in your chairs or in, your, in the pews um, because we want to make sure that people have access safely to the sanctuary um, for prayer and reflection. So fun news. Also um, live prayer time on, for, for the morning prayer will be beginning next Tuesday. Um, so it's a 6.45 a.m. prayer time. It'll be 20 to 30 minutes long, depending on how many people come and share. And it's over Zoom. So we provide that link in our weekly update. We'd love for, I would love for you to join me. It's for anybody and it's definitely family friendly. So we hope that you will come to that. In addition to be looking out for our Thursday night service um, that is gonna be on, um, you, on Zoom and also a few spaces available in person for that too. So a lot is going on. Um, we're working very hard to make sure that we are um, meeting everyone's needs and also providing much needed spiritual support um, during this crazy and different time. Um, so before I begin today, or as we begin today, I should say, um, I would like to share with you from Philippians um, chapter 1, verse 21 to 30. And um, this is a lectionary text for this Sunday. Um, so I, I, was, um, I always love reading in Philippians. It was one of those Bible studies that I did, the first real Bible study in high school. And um, I am excited to be um, diving in a little bit into Philippians with you today. So hear the word of God. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. And I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation, and this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well. Since you are having the same struggle that I saw, that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. It's the word of God for us, the people of God today. You know, one of these, one of the passages in this text that I read today that I, I often quote, it just comes out in prayers when I'm praying um, just off the top of my head and my heart, um, just wanting to live lives worthy of the gospel of Christ. 
Um, it's something that sticks with me because this is Paul's plea um, because Paul is in jail in this point and writing to um, his faithful churchgoers and people who are young in the faith and are seeking to live as Christ followers and understanding that and trying that out on their own um, without the guidance of Paul right with them. Um, and yet, you know, Paul's, one of the things that Paul is, is sharing with them as their leader is to continue to strive to live as Christ, um, as Christ lived and uh, uh, listen to the gospel. Make sure that you are listening to the gospel and living a life that's worthy of Christ. And so often that is in my forefront, you know, of when I, when I get up and I start my day or I end my day, I wonder, you know, did I live a life worthy of the gospel? Did I, um, did I embody um, Christ in this world? Did I um, seek to live in one spirit with God? Um, when I am uh, put up against opponents, you know, <laughs> whatever, whoever, whatever those opponents might be, um, where was I in some ways not intimidated, um, but also kept firm um, in my convictions and following Jesus and, and seeking to be Jesus in the world. Um, so I leave that with you today. Uh, and uh, the rest of Philippians is, is quite a journey if you'd like to read it. It's not too long, um, but it's a good, it's one of those good letters to refresh every so often. So I'd like to share with you uh, concerns today. Um, the first is an update on Carol Bryson. Um, Carol is back um, from Haywood, to Haywood Lodge where he's, he lives. Um, he was discharged from his hospital stay. So we're grateful he's doing better. Kathy McNeil is feeling better, uh, much better after her stent was replaced and um, she is eagerly looking forward to um, starting chemo on Monday. Um, so our prayers are with her as she journeys, continues to journey through this. Willie Hubbard, we continue to pray for him as he is also um, dealing with cancer. He has begun chemo and ha has been doing radiation treatments and so he's in the midst and the thick of that. Pat Dean is set to um, start her treatments as well for her cancer. Um, so prayers for her and for Lyndon as they continue to navigate radiation and chemo as well. Sarah Hunter sent me a message and asked for us to pray for Dr. Cliff Spohr, S-P-O-H-R, um, and his wife Piper and their child Aiden who is 12. Um, Dr. Spohr is in the hospital in Jacksonville, Florida, um, and has severe pneumonia. Corinne Faircloth asked us to pray for her friend, John. Um, if you remember, we've been praying, we were praying for a while for one of her friends um, who was struggling um, and, and ended up dying. And so this is her friend, John's um, daughter-in-law, um, had a new baby um, a little boy who was premature at two pounds and eight ounces at birth um, because of some health complications of the mother. Um, so we pray for their family at this challenging time of um, losing their, his wife and mother um, and also of this challenge of this premature baby. Um, we pray for Walton Garrett. We heard recently from his daughter, Susan, um, and, that's, and she called to say that he's really not doing well um, and he's declining rapidly. Um, he's been living in Colorado, um, but prayers for him um, as he seems to be in his last days. Prayers for Bryn. Bryn asks for prayers for both of her siblings. We've been praying for them. Steve and her brother had surgery, um, had a hip replacement, and is home today from the hospital, but still having lots of pain. Um, and, but he has been walking, so that is good. And Ellen, her sister, is, is doing well. She, of course, is still receiving chemo treatments. Um, is pretty tired from those, but is in good spirits. Beth Christopoulos um, asked for prayers for her. She has a phone interview on Friday morning for a new job. Um, so prayers for that job opportunity and that things go well for her. We have um, three members of our church who are grieving great losses. So we ask for prayers for them. Um, just after prayer time last week, we learned um, 
that Jack Schallenberger died. Um, Doris is his wife, and, um, and if you might recognize the last name Schallenberger, Christine and, and Brian Schallenberger um, are their family, and so this is Brian's dad who passed away last week. So prayers for them as they mourn his loss. We also learned that um, Myrtle Kenyon's brother-in-law died, so prayers for Myrtle as they grieve. And Mike Blackburn shared that um, a great friend of, of their family, Harold Blue, um, who was one of the original Wilderness Trail organizers and people who helped get it up and going and participated in that ministry, um, died. And so we pray for all of those who are grieving um, that loss to the Wilderness Trail family. We have a couple of birthdays to celebrate coming up. Um, we mentioned during this time those who have birthdays that are turning 90 and, and older. And so um, Mary Ann Way and Carol Bryson have the same birthday, and it's on Saturday. Um, Mary Ann will be 90, and Carol Bryson will be 96. So um, we celebrate their lives, give thanks for all that they mean to us. Um, so make sure that you send a card or give a call um, to celebrate their birthdays on Saturday. Um, we also continue to pray for general needs um, for all the wildfires that are happening all over the West Coast and even some inland. Um, for those who are in the path of the hurricane, um, for schools and teachers and students and families who are once again transitioning um, with the onset of in-person hybrid schedule coming up for Haywood County Schools. And of course our nation as we um, continue to approach election time and all of the divisions that that can create. So a lot of concerns today. I'm going to check my phone and make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, but anytime you'd like to text me, call me, or email me, please do that. Um, I would love to be able to pray for you and those that you love. Um, make sure they're in my journal so I can pray over you regularly. So let us go to God in prayer today. Holy God, we give you thanks for the reminder that your presence is always with us. We give you thanks for the Holy Scriptures, for learning about the lives of Christians from so long ago, for reminders of the struggle of faith, the reminders that faith is not easy, and that it seems like our entire lifetimes we are trying to continue to figure it out. We thank you that in those moments where we, where we fail or we struggle, that your presence never wanes, and your grace is always there. We pray that you would continue to guide us, continue to give us strength in your Holy Spirit, to live lives that are worthy of you, to continue to strive to be more Christ-like in our thoughts, in our deeds, our actions, and in some ways our inaction. Because we hope that our souls are so connected to you that our thoughts are not far from your sight. We ask your blessings upon all of those that we've mentioned today, those that are struggling with, with difficult treatments, for those who are grieving great losses, for those who are in transition and seeking help with jobs, for those who have great circumstances that are not to be mentioned publicly, but those struggles are great and the same. We pray for protection over those in the path of the hurricane and wildfires. We pray that the divisions in our nation might become less divisive and that unity can be formed and that relationships can be healed where they, where they have been hurt. We pray for schools and teachers and all that they are going through and families as they continue to struggle through all that makes it life difficult during COVID times. And through it all, through all of the difficulty and struggle and through all of the joys that we find in little moments and smiles from beyond the mask, we give you thanks that you are a God who loves us all. So let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next week.